So, recording. Let's just see how this comes out. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So, uh, we'll start by talking about how you and Raf chose the subject and uh, started to make the artwork because the artwork came first in the creation of this piece. Right. Well, Dante seemed to be in the air this year, in the zeitgeist, because it's the 700th year of Dante's death in Ravenna and Italy was making a big fanfare. Um, Dante is their most famous poet. So there were, uh, there was a festival in September, a Dante festival, um, and in 70 Italian cities there were events going on around Dante. So it just felt like um, Dante was a good theme <laughs> so for, 19, for 2021, you know. <laughs> but once, once you decided on Dante, yes. and why, why Canto I, what about that? Well, Dante covers such an enormous canvas, even in this one work, The Divine Comedy, just divided up into three sections, heaven, purgatory, so we'll start, hell, purgatory and heaven. And uh, where does one begin? Uh, it seemed a good place to begin at the beginning. It also gave, it gives us the opportunity perhaps of dealing with Canto 2 at another stage or Canto 3, you know, and making a, a bigger work. And um, the, the opening of Hell, um, to Hell in the first Canto, um, also seemed kind of, the idea of Hell seems peculiarly relevant to our times. It really does. And, that, and that's not um, the theological imaginary Hell of Dante's times, but that in some sort of ways we are anxious, anxiously as humanity becoming aware that we might be creating hell on earth, that uh, we are responsible for um, another sort of hell in our own era. Um, and if one reads Dante in this way for in our own times, for our own times, um, it produces some really very interesting thoughts about what creates hell on earth. So then you decided on the media that you used. In other words, you, you, you made sketches, uh, drawings. Oh yes, I had um, worked earlier this year on a series of kind of drawings in much the same manner, using watercolour and working into watercolour with mixed media, keeping it very fluid and uh, suggestible. And I suppose the theme wasn't so different. It was a theme of, um, you know, mixed media work that I called cross angels because I was really meaning, you know, um, angels that aren't pleased with mankind. They're kind of like scolding mankind a bit, you know. And this was for an exhibition in Cape Town. Um, and so I've been mean, already kind of fiddling around with this idea of um, we're in an, we're we're on a cusp. Our age is on a cusp, and we could go into hell, or we could go into semi hell, or we could escape hell. But it depends on our the choices. It very much depends on the choices we make very rapidly now. It seems to us, you know, from um, the evidence of climate change and what scientists are telling us. And um, so this whole series of cross angels uh, was, you know. Um, the angels kind of talking down and being scolding us a little bit and you know it was it was also it was very serious but it was also I was attempting to be humorous but how does that relate really um, to the canto and so that led me into this idea of the canto which is also an allegory about uh the dangers of consciousness going astray because that's what's led us into our current 
um, predicament, you know, in the Anthropocene, the sage we, we call the Anthropocene, where the hand of man is, and mankind is very heavy and creating, you know, mass extinctions of animals and insects and so on. So um, how, how for you did the disturbing. individual drawings follow, um, did they follow for you the canto or...? Uh, yes, look, I first of all uh, read the first section and tried to contemplate the main uh, iconic um, elements of that first section, which are the mountain, the pathway, the forest, um, those are the geographic elements, and then there are animal elements too. But what does the mountain represent? The mountain always represents, it's sort of like, well, it does in the canto, it represents an, something that needs to be climbed. It's, it's, it's hard to climb a mountain, it's going to be an effort. And then when you get to the top, that seems to be a good outlook place. I mean, the forest represents uh, a place where you can easily get lost. Um, where there's a tangle of trees, where the light is not, can maybe not be good. You don't see very well. You can start imagining and hallucinating mm. that there are animals coming after you the or challenges. eyes looking at you. They're challenges. And the it's, mountain has to be got up, the forest has to right. be That's right, and there's through. a pathway. And then sometimes the pathway, the pathway is the track you can stay on in order to get through these obstacles. Um, sometimes the pathway gets lost, you or you, or it just peters out. Or so there was. There, there's also that image of the pathway, which is the way through to success. And then on the pathway, um, there are these animals one one meets that are that that create obstacles. Um, Dante first encounters the three animals that, um, for him in his time were representative of three of the cardinal sins. Mm. So Dante is very wrapped up in uh, his worldview, um, where um, if you were, were, if you please God, you got to heaven, and if you did not, you ended up in hell. And um, people were kind of, you know, henpecked at the ankles with with the idea that if you if you um, indulged in the cardinal sins, you were going to go to hell and not to heaven. So um, the unless you could buy an indulgence, that's unless you could <laughs> unless you were rich. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So um, the leopard is one of the um, the animals he meets, and and uh, from Dante, Dante's worldview, um, that represents lust, and then. Um, there's the the wolf, greed, and the third animal, um, the, lion. the lion is. Um, I think it's the, uh, it's power. It's the um, how can I say the attractions of power. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, so when You're I setting your soul for it, you know. You know mm. When I get involved, then. I have to take these drawings. There's um, 20 something drawings and, um, and put it into video to then put music to it. Uh, and something interesting happened along the way as we were trying to uh, uh, decide how to visualize these is that the images, um, we mirrored them. So they suddenly went from a single page to a double page, that each is a reflection of itself, which I think changed uh, visually a lot. Yeah, I think um, it's always exciting when um, the work takes over, really. And I think that's part of a successful creative process is that you, one remains open to not not to think things through too um, decisively in advance, but to remain open to the possibilities possibilities that come up in process, and that was maybe the most exciting process moment. Well, we would f had first thought that we should have text on the one side, and then the image on the other, um, so the screen should look like a book, and then that idea didn't seem very worth following. So the idea came up to um, <laughs> flip the image um, and have two images side by side. And 
as soon as the idea was came up, I just knew it was the obvious solution. Because what happens is that, um, how to say, the edges of the, what were the, were the edges of the drawing, of a drawing, become the centre. And um, it's almost like a raw shash blosh, blotch mm. as well, mm. that you get these two centres um, joining up in interesting ways, creating such suggestibility of imagery. Um, and this idea of the left brain and the right hemisphere, the, the, the brain with the right and the left hemisphere is immediately there as well. So you immediately plunged into a visual arena that um, relates to consciousness. Yeah, well, interesting. Relates what, to the brain. Interesting is what, yeah. what we found is that mm -hmm. as the text uh, suggests certain images, mm -hmm. uh, you start to see images that weren't perhaps... Um, yeah. originally designed yeah yeah but I, I was deliberately working in a method that I wanted the um, the visuals to be suggestible in fact I was making lines and then myself pulling the images out of lines you know as mm. I was going along uh, realizing that I was if I worked that way then there would be a lot more kind of fluttering lines and um, for other people to also read in you know the odd winking eye or um, wicked snarl of a wild animal or whatever you know so the idea of suggestibility was very much part of the working process so at that point we have the double images and then I uh, needed to just make some musical decisions decide on um, some musical materials which I'll go into a little bit later and start to play around with how the images could be manipulated to move from still to an idea of progression and moving suggestibility, as you mentioned before, uh, that the images were now suggesting paths. And finally, um, for a very simple reason that we were largely locked down while we were making this, I used the piano because I had one. And that was it. Uh, so. Um, the score is made entirely uh, from the piano. In a way, it's it's a it's a, it's a music concrete piece. Uh, I've recorded lots of things, uh, some passages which are more or less intact, and then other bits and bobs uh, that um, I then uh, played around with to 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 try to make up uh, something that sounds like much more than a than the piano. Um, I mean, it's quite recognizable as a piano. Probably everywhere except for perhaps uh, the lion roar and the, the howl of the wolf. But you know, the, the usual tricks. Uh, I recorded the piano being struck. Uh, I actually found that I got a nice effect from a cork. Uh, I don't want to suggest that there's lots of corks lying around the house, <laughs> but there are some. and. Um, and that actually gave a nice effect. Uh, a little bit of, I used a, a, an effect of strum, uh, but mostly it was just uh, different angles and distances from the piano, just taking a straight sound. And it is a peculiar instrument. It's, a, it's a, an instrument from uh, more or less 1900. So already it's got a certain um, timbre. In a sense, the music is a bit, I mean, you know, I don't want to say orchestral, but it, it's not something that could just be played back on the piano because there's lots of collaging things together and working things out, uh, which was sometimes tricky um, to try to get it to work. Um, and then it was, well, there was the architecture of the canto, obviously, and then there was the architecture that you gave with the drawings. And then there was a question of figuring out something that worked musically, sound-wise, and with a bit of pacing. And so, and while the drawings were done first, um, there was a bit of back and forth in, in the sense of finding, discovering the idea of the, the mirror, and then figuring out how the images could be further uh, manipulated and turned into um, events over time uh, along with the music and that happened a little bit um, piecemeal.
So there was a real back and forth. There was a cross pollination, pollination, even though, even though the um, drawings were done first. So, um, musical interlude. Basically, um, I did the old-fashioned thing of having um, just some some base material uh, from which I I worked from that. And basically, the genesis of the music is. Uh, is this. So two notes, half step, step, which is a half step together, and then, and so from there, I, uh, I transposed it up a fifth. Actually, I transposed it a lot, but from the basis of that, uh, for example, the very, very beginning, uh, kind of ominous, uh, taking advantage of, um, of the piano, uh, is just that, that, uh, transposed and played around with it's the, same, it's the same thing so that just basically gets twisted around uh, a lot later on you've got it uh, rhythmically altered and sorts of permutations with that so really um I'm, I, it's maybe a bit boring but it's really just um those few motives uh no that one motive uh twisted and turned every sort of way uh eventually even leading to um uh, somewhere sorry i scribble a lot um i scribble way too much uh, what I call, uh, uh, th these are chords that are used uh, at various spots. Uh, so it's just a recomposition of, of the, that basic series. Uh, so it's just, and turning that into a, a longer, a longer row if you want. And that's, I'm afraid, pretty much all technically uh, there is to it. And it's just playing around um, and cut and paste. And at the very beginning of the piece, actually, uh, there's some text which speaks a little about the idea of the conscious uh, mind and development and and um, uh, other things that um, that were of interest going into the piece. Anything else? Yeah, I'm sure we could talk about a lot else. Uh, what's the next question? What role does improvisation play? Um, uh, well. I suppose that uh, could be an art question as well as a music question. Go um, ahead, take it. Um, I suppose that um, that puts one into the space as to how pre-planned something is, or how um, or how open one is to finding things in the moment. I've spoken a bit about that. I mean, <coughs> well, there's always a degree of improvisation there. It is always, but because I, I, I def I'd only started out with the plan that I w we're going to use these um, iconic allegorical elements of, you know, the geography of, of the first canto, the mountain, the forest, uh, the path, um, uh, together with the, the animals and, and then the figure of Virgil. And then... I played, I didn't really know what was, I didn't know what was coming, and you know, and, and I suppose the nice way of, is it's always very nice if you can be open to letting the work lead you by the nose and 
and enjoying the surprises that happen. And one of the, there are a few a few things that came up. One was that some of the images I kept wanting to make them um, look um, abstract, like a Kandinsky painting, you know, um, standing in for sound. I, I wanted to create that uh, connection to the score in the visuals. Also, this idea of abstraction that that the imagery is not real life. I don't want it to be seen as real life. I want it to be seen as a reflection upon real life, that which art does. It's its own world, mm. you know. The music, we're bringing together different worlds. There's, there's the world created by Dante in the words and the poem, which we don't use all of. I mean, we're selective with them. I mean, you didn't, we, we actually made a sort of a, a precy of the first canto because we didn't want to overwhelm... Um, the audience with um, well, in fact, wordiness, I in suppose. Fact, you, 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 know, you made um, your drawings. Yes. And then we looked for just a phrase. A phrase that would that sum something up. Sum, not each mm. drawing, but mm. enough to just give. To give the. the, the as, a snapshot. As, yeah. Yeah. Of, the, of a particular situation. Mm. So there were these, these drawings that related very closely to the idea of a visual score that I've interspersed throughout the. Um, the series of the drawings, drawings, paintings. Uh, that was the one surprise. And then the other surprise was coming up with some of the imagery. I mean, a, a two kind of highlights for me was towards the end when um, Dante, the poet, meets the poet Virgil on the road. And it seemed to me, I mean, it's just what came up in the drawing, that the drawing... Uh, not the first one, but the second image of uh, of Virgil seemed to roll together both Virgil and the figure of Beatrice, and I and I kept it looking. I didn't want to interfere with that because it seemed to me very um, nice. So, so this idea of rolling together uh, Dante's two guides, because um, Virgil is Dante's guide for the per first part of mm. his journey, mm. and then although we don't deal with this section. Virgil is not able to take Dante further and the only figure who can actually um, lead Dante through the um, tangled wildernesses of his own hell, his own consciousness um, and this world that is being um, described is the figure of Beatrice. Um, who represents divine love, and but actually had a, a real life beginning in Dante's life. A, a woman he met when she was a young girl, a very young girl, a nine-year-old, and he was overwhelmed with this feeling that um, he had seen a vision. <laughs> he had met um, a pure being, and she remained his inspiration for life. So. These two figures got kind of rolled into one and I kept seeing Virgil, Beatrice, Virgil, Beatrice and left it like that. It seemed to me co absolutely correct that that's how it should be. And then I also got exci I was excited at, at the, in the last drawing to um, create something that looked both like, how can I say, theatre curtains, but the theatre curtains of the universe, you know. Mm. They were, it's kind of, it got a kind of a cosmic element that in, into it that was quite unexpected because one doesn't always know what one's mind is thinking and that's kind of, kind of the excitement about art making really, you know. If one finds that it gets onto the page what, what your thoughts are and that you're surprising yourself. I mean, that's why I'm interested in art making, you know. It's that, that sense of it being very alive and a conversation between yourself and your unknown self, just like the split screens, perhaps, you know, I mean, the split images, you know, what do you know, what do you not, what do you not know, and um, mm. the, finding that path in between, you know. Well, mm. yeah. thank you very much, <laughs> and thanks very much to the, uh, the VE uh, uh, team, uh, especially uh, Maestro uh, Theo Herbst for uh, once again getting us in. Involved. Uh, and um, that's it. Anne and Christopher, thank you so much for this wonderful insight. Um, 
the context that you've sketched, it, it is a remarkable work. Contour One is a remarkable composition. And um, I find it extremely mm, stimulating the trajectory that you followed. Um, the work you're presenting this year compared to the work that was done last year, um, there's a very, a very interesting trajectory for me, artistic tra trajectory um, that has revealed and inspired me, had, has revealed a lot about the interaction between sound and image and has inspired me in my own work. So thank you for, thank you for that. Um, first off, I'd like to apologize that I have uh, mucked up the times on our program. Um, I take responsibility for that. And we do, we would like to, to spend to spend time to allow questions, to, to allow communication to, to you guys. I don't see any questions in the chat right now. So I'm going to be so audacious and fire off the first of a number of uh, questions that I have. Um, Christopher, um, am I correct when I say that you utilized only one um, non-traditional piano sound in the in the work, the, the, the cork object to, to, to employing this cork? It, um, if we, uh, well, and, and a little bit of scraping, but not a lot, <laughs> which, which is to say just on the very lowest strings, right. um, I tried a couple of different samples of that, but nothing, nothing really, you know, I don't even know if that counts as untraditional at this point. Right, right. Um, so that's to me that stands out a little bit. It it's it's in a it's a sound that is, uh, in a way, it isolates itself a little bit. And my my follow up question would be whether there was a purpose behind this wall. Um, did you? Yeah, I, I had sp I specifically at one point I wanted to try to get a sound that spoke a little bit of, about a couple of the important. Um, um, appearances of the of the of the beasts that he that he encounters oh. and and so uh i just whatever reason i thought that the idea of a, a low scrape uh, brought down might somehow get me close to a roar okay right right and then and then the howl was just taking a high sustained note and in, in having him bent that was easier to do actually uh -huh. I never did figure out how to make a leopard sound, so I just, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, thank you. Um, Anne, um, I think traditionally, well, I use the word traditionally very uh, liberally here. Traditionally, one thinks of, of a composer writing music to to images, uh, composing music to, to images. That, that occurs very often, I think. Uh, were you at all inspired by the by the soundtrack, if I might put it that way? Well, because this this time it happened the other way. Um, often I am inspired by soundtracks, and and one of my real delights is to take a sketchbook along to a concert um, ah. if circumstances are correct, and 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 make visual notations to the music. I mean, to the sounds. I love that. You know, yeah. uh, it's something that um, is a sort of a, a, a meditation to me, if you like. I mean, it takes enormous uh, concentration in the moment. It's a sort of a, how can I say, it's an adjacent form of improvisation to um, improvise, improvise jazz, which is something that Christopher often plays. Yes, yes. Fascinating. Thank you. Um, Douglas, may I ask you to come live with your question, please? I just had one little observation right at the end of your statement, and you seem to be saying that these would be the mythic journey, and really Dante's Divine Comedy is perhaps the ultimate indication of the mythic journey in poetry, that if you know where you're going in the mythic journey, it's not a mythic that not knowing where you're going is actually integral to it being a mythic journey. And, and that, and this Christopher will, I'm sure, identify with this. 
That is the, the reiteration of the creative process itself every time. You know where you're going, then you're not on the way. My life. Exactly. My Thank life. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So uh, it was sort of like correct to be in the zone of unknowing as one set out on the path of creation. Yeah. <laughs> For this piece. <laughs> The second thing that I picked up on was that you alluded to and then dashed off, that was to me very interesting. And that is what um, Virgil and Beatrice represent symbolically. So Virgil seems to perhaps, and this is a question more than a statement, perhaps represents the intellect, logic, um, the masculine, the uh, action. That, that, that line of things, whereas the feature being the love object represents the emotions, the, so Dante in a curious way might, might be saying logic can take you so far. Beyond that, you need vision, you need the cloud of unknowing, you need, you, you alluded to that and perhaps- Thank you, I, I, I think that's the most wonderful observation and absolutely spot on. Yeah, one is the one sort of represents the head, and I mean Virgil the head, and and uh, Beatrice the heart. Yeah, <laughs> a sort of a complete intelligence when they both come together. But you need both. Of course. You need both. <laughs> That's me. Thank you, Douglas. Uh, to the floor. Everybody present. I have, did. A, I have a gazillion questions. Um, I was just saying to Anne that it could be, I mean, I'm starting to think that the presentation video might be more entertaining than the piece. I thought that came <laughs> off. No, 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 no. The best is still to come. There's no doubt about that. Um, yeah, I, 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 don't, I wouldn't like to hog the airwaves. Um, so perhaps we should close at, at this point in time um, by once again thanking both of you. Um, it, it really is from the bottom of my heart that I'd like to thank you for, yeah, for applying yourselves and, and, and just serving as, in a way, uh, artistic inspiration to, to quite a number of composers down, down south. Um, you are very precious and thank you so much for your, for your input. And I just want to quickly get in a big thank you to you, Theo, for organizing the most stunningly interesting program. I was poring over the program last night and I thought to myself, you are amazing for getting this together. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And the next thing is I'm going to learn how to count so I can actually figure <laughs> out when times have to start, you know, which brings me, thank you, Anne, um, which brings me to the next point. Um, I would once again officially like to apologize to Dr. Richards um, for the slight delay in the program. Um, I, I did a miscalculation there.